Okay, so number 12. <clears throat> told us that r of x was equal to f of negative x minus 3. So you guys should have been able to say, oh, well, that's going to be negative x minus 3 equal to d squared. That would be the equation. And that should have been able to get you there. Then I told you we didn't have time. Graph it on the graph and calculator, see what it looks like. And a lot of you were like having trouble with the graph and calculator. But when you graphed it, a lot of you saw that this graph goes to the left, but when you see that negative sign right there, you probably thought it would go to the right. So what happens is when we have multiple transformations, horizontal transformations, we have to separate these transformations. You have to separate a stretch shrink, or reflection from the translate. You see, you have to separate this reflection from the translation. It also have, you would also have to do if there's a stretch or shrink, but that's just a one, so there's no stretch or shrink. So to, to separate that, we're going to do something called factor. And in this case, it's a negative 1. It won't always be a negative 1. But we're going to do something called factoring that, which you did learn about in a previous course. And we will really, really, really practice a lot of it in chapter um, 2 and 3, mainly 3. 3 and 4, mainly 3. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to factor out. That's like undistributing. You know the distributive property. You were hopefully just doing it for your warm-up today. We're going to undistribute this negative 1, but it does not go outside of the square. Just going to go in its own parenthesis, negative 1 outside of its own parenthesis. It's still inside the square. Um, when I take out the negative 1 from the x, I just have x left over. When I take out the negative 1 from the negative 3, what gets left over? Plus 3. So then when I write my transformation, this is a reflect in the y-axis, which you should have had anyway. But then when you look here, it's a plus 3. That translates left 3 units. So this would only happen if we had a stretch, shrink, or reflection in the y-axis and a translate left or right. If you have both of those, you have to separate them by factor. So if that happens again, I'll be sure that I go over this again. Because you don't really have time to practice a bunch of that. But if it happens again, which it will at some point, we'll go over it again. Okay? So that's why that one ended up being to the uh, left over there. So if you want any other answers from this, I have the answer key. You can get it from me anytime. <coughs> but we are going to move on with the rest of our notes. Um, did you have time to practice your distributive property? I did do it right. Did you have time to do your distributive property? Yes. You want to pack with it all the time? Yeah. Okay, so just to review, okay, I'll go over one of these and then I'll put the answers up for the rest of them. Just to review, when you distribute, when you distribute, you're taking, when we have two terms that you're distributing to two terms or however many, you're taking 2x and you're distributing to 3x and you're taking 2x and distributing to minus 7. So you're distributing the 2x to both terms in the second parenthesis. So that'll give you 6x squared. 2x times minus 7 is minus 14x. <coughs> then we have to distribute minus 5 to the other parentheses. So minus 5 times 3x is minus 15x. 
and then minus 5 times minus 7 is plus 35. Then what we have to do is we have to add together any like terms that we have. Like terms, same variable, same exponent, middle two terms. Oh, that's convenient. I lined them up already. So we have 6x squared minus 29x plus 35. <clears throat> so then number two, what does squared mean? What does this thing mean? Itself. Say it again. Distributing it with itself. Yeah. Two, two parentheses of itself. Yes. <laughs> but what does squared in general mean? If you had anything squared, if I have like this it's squared, times, itself. times by itself, right? So I'm going to write first x plus 3 times x plus 3. Because then we have to distribute the x to both terms. So we get x squared plus 3x. Then we have to distribute the 3 to both terms. So we get plus 3x plus 9. Combine your like terms, you get x squared plus 6x plus 9. Anybody have x squared plus 9 on their paper? Mm-hmm. You do that, a bunny die. I'll probably die. Even worse. I'll probably die. Don't do that. Ever again. Let's do it. We, you can't just distribute the squares. You have to write the thing twice and distribute the things on the inside. Okay? That was your one puppy you could die, that could, you could kill this year. I have a puppy. Exactly. I hope it's not your one. Oh, I thought you were going to say, I hope it is your one. No. We don't want puppies and bunnies to die. Oh, I'm sorry. No. What did you say? Okay, there is um, number five a lot of people ask me about in um, my other classes. So number five, before I do that one, I just want to ask you. So number five is it, it, like multiplying three things. It's multiplying by number three times 2x plus 7, but I'm going to totally make up a much easier number. Five. And that is being multiplied by itself. Okay? So five squared would be like five times five. So we are actually multiplying three things together. When you multiply three things together, how do you actually multiply three things together over now? How would you multiply that? Does it have to be left to right? It's just multiplication. Are you allowed to multiply three things at a time? How? How? How do you multiply three things at a time? Please take your headphones out. No, you don't. How would you multiply that? Thank you. You do well. That's one way. You would do three times five. Find the answer. Take that answer times five. So you can only multiply two things at a time. You can't multiply three things at a time. Now, do I have to do three times five and get fifteen, and take fifteen times five? Or could I do 5 times 5 and get 25 times 3? Yeah. Either would be fine because it's all multiplication. So that's what we're doing for number 5. It really looks like more complicated. So you have to do two things at a time. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write out 3 times 2x plus 7 times 2x plus 7. <laughs> I personally would multiply these two together first, then distribute three. But I also have the um, power of seeing into the future because I know what you're going to use this for in the future. So this is the way I would recommend doing it. But you could, if you wanted to, distribute the three into just the front one and then take that answer and distribute it with two or seven. That's what I did. And it's fine. But I have the power to see into the future, and I think it'll be easier for you in the future if you do it this way. But you don't have to believe me. I've only had 18 years of experience teaching. 
Oh my gosh, she's so old. It looks like 20 ways. I don't know what you just said, dear. Not everything. Almost things. There are different ways to solve problems in this world. Yes. Okay, so after I distribute, then I would um, uh, after I distribute my two binomials, I would distribute my three. What is it? Bro, I got you. Gosh, that's all right. I have the answer. I got you. Where it's, it's 70, 70, 80, 84. It's 84. There it is. There it is. All right, so there's the rest of the answers if you um, got through that many of them to check them. But we're not going to focus on this. We actually were warming that up to do something on block day with it. So we won't even do that today. It'll be on block day. So if you can do the distributing property, you'll be good for the block test. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we are going to fill out some notes. You have an assignment. Did everybody get graph paper? Because your assignment is 10 graphs tonight. So I make sure you had at least 10 graphs. The assignment's in the book. We haven't gotten to the notes yet, but the assignment's in the book. So um, if you want to check out a book and you haven't yet, you can check out a book today. Otherwise, you can go on um, Big Ideas Online and just open the book that way. Or you can just take a screenshot of any of the books around the room as well. Okay. <coughs> so just kind of a, um, whoops. This is the wrong answer. Just kind of a reminder about what we did yesterday. So yesterday we were transforming the pair of function. We're going to keep doing that. Um, before we actually transform the pair of function, there is a there is a transformation formula equation thing that I want to go over with you once this opens. My computer's really slow. Mm -hmm. This is on the front page, and um, it's all the way up here, but I'm going to change it just a teeny tiny slight bit. Just a little bit. Let's do this. Let's even color, color code it. Oh, shoot, that's not right. I was trying to overachieve and do too many things. I'm forgetting stuff. Wow. Yep. Yeah. There we go. I just color coded four different. Um, variables, these all stand for numbers, and all of these have to do with transformations. I'm going to start with this one over here because my pen is orange and it's not one of those easy choices, so I'm going to write this one first. <coughs> if you have, outside of the entire squared function, a plus number, or it could be a negative number all the way over here, what does that do to the graph? Translate either, it is vertical, translate up or down, that many numbers. Okay, <clears throat> so what's the H do? Translate left to right. I'll do the A next. Do that so I have room for B as well. Um, the A, look where that is. That's all the way on the outside. It's not getting squared. It's not in the parentheses. It's not getting squared. Could be a stretch, could be a shrink, or it could be a reflection. And all of it's vertical. So vertical 
We'll say stretch, shrink, or reflection. Stretch, shrink, or reflect. And then B. Notice, before we do anything, that I have B, and it is factored out of this X minus transformation thing. It's like factored out of it, but it's still inside the square. Horizontal what? Mm -hmm. Horizontal stretch, shrink, or reflection. It's all horizontal. So that's the transformation um, function. <coughs> and today we're going to have multiple transformations. Yesterday in our assignment, the only multiple ones were 10 and 12, but most, most of them were just one thing at a time. Today we're going to have multiple ones, okay? Yes, sir? So, um, <coughs> I actually do not think we need the first few examples. We're going to skip ahead until everything's combined together. So I'm going to go all the way to example two. So we already did example one kind of in our notes yesterday. We kind of already did that example one. We're going to go all the way to example two. We're going to do these. Well, I don't know. Yeah. We're going to lay the page numbers on. Yeah, someday. Um, this is the only page we're going to do in class as well. Like the next page is for block day. So this is the only thing we're doing in class. We do example. All right. <laughs> So if you see negative one-half x squared, you're going to say, what kind of transformation is negative one-half x squared? Everything's vertical because none of that negative one-half is in the square. It's all vertical. So we've got a shrink and reflection. In the x-axis. And then we also have a vertical shrink. Factor of one half. Here, write down your transformation. And then I would highly recommend we're using tables anytime we have a stretch or a shrink. Which here we have a shrink. So I would recommend we use a table. So we have our pair function table, the exact same thing we did for our um, note and assignment yesterday. And then I've got a reflect in the x-axis and I have a vertical shrink factor of one half. Both of those are vertical. So remember with this, with this um, table, anything vertical affects the y-axis because the y-axis is vertical. Anything horizontal goes on the x side. Because the x-axis is horizontal. So these are both vertical things, and both of them are being multiplied. So I will multiply all of my y's by negative and by one-half. So I went quickly through, and I multiplied all my y's by negative a half. And since I replaced my y's, I don't need my old y's anymore. I still need my old x's, but new y's. Negative 3, negative 4 and a half. Negative 2, negative 2. Negative 1, negative half. 0, 0. And my reflection. Yes? You're rushed for time and you, you know, write things slower or don't follow as fast, at least get the table part written down. Because you could always plot points later. Plotting points is a long time ago skill. I hope. <laughs> I had to teach people how to do it this year. So. Mm -hmm. If I'm going too fast, again, if I'm going too fast, just make sure you get the table 
But that's really, once you get to your table, then you just have to pull up points you've graphed. Okay? And again, this is being recorded. You go watch it later. So the next one. We've got g of x equals in parentheses 2x squared plus 1. So that 2 inside of the parentheses is what kind of transformation? Horizontal what? Horizontal shrink factor of one half. Why didn't I use two? Because horizontal, everything's opposite operation. Then we have plus one. That translate where? Up one. Up one unit. So now in my table, anything horizontal goes on the x side. So I'm going to multiply my x's by a factor of one half. Anything vertical goes on the y side. I'm going to add 1 to my y values. Once I replace my x's or I replace my y's, we use the new one. And I replace both. So again, minimally get the table down, and then you could always go graph it later. Or one of those it, it's just messy. Okay. <laughs> well, we did number four. We did that one already. The next one I'm going to do is 5. And then the minus 1 is inside the parentheses, so it's a translate right 1 unit. So anything horizontal goes to the x. We've got translate right, so plus 1 on the x. Anything vertical goes to the y side, multiply by 3. You get a number like 27, eh, we don't have to graph it. Leave it off the graph. Of 
course, I wrote my transformations where my, <laughs> my points are going to go. So then, um, don't need my old x's, don't need my old y's. Graphing a different color, negative, negative 1, 12. Zero. That one's not there. Zero three. One zero. Two. table written down, then you can always go plot the graph. Yeah. All right, so the last one I'm gonna I'm gonna graph my parent function real fast and write down the table. transformations up here are vertical? Two of them. So how do we know which ones go first? Or it doesn't even matter. It does matter. You always do like order of operations, multiplication, before you do adding and subtracting. So am I going to multiply by negative 1 for the reflection? Then I'm going to add 2. You have to do multiplication before you do adding subtracting, just like order of operations. That's convenient. You can remember it. Then on the x side, we only have one thing happening. It's just uh, subtractory. But if you do have multiple things happening on the same side, you do multiply before you do adding or subtracting. Otherwise, I'll get off. Well, let's just see negative one. Sorry, it's not negative one. And since we have like multiple lies. You just use the very outer Y. You cross out two Y's, use the very outer Y. Cross out those X's, use the very outer X to graph. I have negative six, negative seven. Five, negative two. <clears throat> OK, 
Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I'm going to put up this still, but I'm also going to put the uh, assignment side by side. So if you're still copying this down, you can get the table. And then um, if you're ready to write down your assignment, you can do that. And that way I can stop the video. Oh, I got to reorder it though. Hold on. Do your assignment. I gave out rock paper book. I'll put it right back up. <clears throat>